Hey folks, so this is our second video looking at Azure Form Recognizer. In our previous video, what we looked at was how to use the custom models uh, with labels with uh, Azure Form Recognizer. Um, this is a service that's in preview that you can use to extract information um, and key value pairs from documents or images. Um, today what we're gonna look at is how we are going to use the service or the capabilities of the service when you're using it without a custom model. So you can actually use it just by submitting a image or a uh, PDF to the service and get the values uh, from the OCR back as a JSON file. And this is you know, actually more like what Amazon AWS Textract does. Um, Textract has a little bit more capability inside of that extraction service, but what Textract doesn't have is Textract doesn't have custom models um, yet, right? So. If you look in the uh, Azure documentation for form recognizer, what you'll see is there's a section called get text layout information, and there's only an example in Python. Um, so today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at an example of how to do this in .NET, uh, but before we go into .NET and write the code, let's take a look at what it's capable of doing, and we can do that just with Postman, okay? So the way that this works is that there are two API calls, and if you come into this documentation, you'll see there's a link down here, um, Analyze Form Layout, and this will take you to a page that has all the API information. And what we wanna do is we're gonna send a request to Analyze Layout, and that will uh, generate a result that will point us to a um, Get Analyze Layout result, okay? Now, if we look at this request, we can see that there are um, only two properties that we need to send over in headers. The first one is the content type, um, and the second one is the OCP uh, APIM subscription key. So this is a subscription key that you get from your Azure portal. And you can see it accepts either a application JSON, which point to a URL, PDF, JPEG, PNG, or TIFF file, um, and that's it. And this, this will give you all the details um, of how to make this request. So I already have this set up here in Postman. Um, obviously I have my key and my headers, but that's, uh, so we're not gonna look at those. But what's very important is you have to send this over as binary. You can't send it over as form data or uh, www form URL encoder either. Um, so it can't be multi-part form data. Um, the body has to be the binary content. And we'll see the consequence of this when we go write the code. Um, and some of, the common, some of the mistake that I made when I was going through this as well. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna pick a file, and I have a series of files in here. We just take a look here. So this is a, this is a really fun uh, uh, document I saw on a whiteboard um, at a customer site. And I think, uh, let's take a look at this. The first line we're expecting, are you lonely? Tired of working on your own? Do you hate making decisions? Hold a meeting, right? So let's take a look at this and send this through. Um, so that's this file here, and we send it. And what you'll see is once we send this up, we will get back a request ID and an operation location. In fact, if we take this full URL, this will give us the location where we can get our uh, response JSON. But I already have the request set up, so I just need to grab this key and replace the value here and send it off. So you can see here I get back a status of succeeded. And you know, it usually takes around one to two seconds. Uh, while it's still processing, it's gonna return a status of running. But once it's completed, you'll get a status of succeeded. And you'll get this analyze result, which has this read results object here. And within the read results, you'll have pages. We only have one page. And then within each page, you'll have the lines, okay? So the lines, you get the individual lines, and you can see here, the first line we have is, are you lonely, right? So this is correct. Whoops. Our second line is, tired of working on your own, so that's also correct. Our third line is, do you hate making decisions? And our fourth line is, hold a meeting, okay? So this is really, you know, really powerful because this is the raw um, extraction without the matching of key value pairs, right? And what that means is you can use this to process arbitrary forms and documents, whereas with the uh, custom model, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to process specific, um, you know, forms and documents that you know 
what that uh, visual model is. So these are really complementary use cases, right? Because what if, you know, maybe before you run your model, you need to determine which model to run. And to determine which model to run, you need to do an extraction to figure out, hey, is this the, uh, what kind of document is this, right? And you can do that several ways. You know, one way you can think about it, um, let's look at a, a uh, real form here, right? One way you can think about it is, um, you know, in a real form, you would expect the metadata, the key metadata about the form to be near the top of the form, right? Um, you know, the title, the type of the form, and things like that. You would probably also expect, uh, potentially, that the title text, the important text that describes what the form is, to be in larger font, right? And what that translates to um, is using this bounding box information to calculate the size of the text, right? Um, and, you know, rather than using the full bounding box and calculating the area, what you may want to do instead is calculate just the height because that may give you a better representation of the font size, right? Whereas the bounding box gives you also the, you know, factors in the length of the text as well. So in this case, this form could be the CELMS form. It could be the suspect adverse reaction report. Um, these two terms are analogous um, in, in, in my space. Uh, but in different use cases, you might want to look for the text that's bigger, right? Because you may have a version number up here, for example, um, and then the actual name of the form would be here, but in a bigger font, right? So you can use this uh, bounding box information to calculate. Um, this is x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. Um, you can use this information to calculate the size of the text that you're dealing with and make some inferences and decisions based on that, okay? Now, I have this other picture here that I think is really interesting. Um, is this picture here, which has this big see it report on the top. And what's interesting to me is it's also got this text here on the side. Um, so, you know, what form recognizer has to do is it has to understand the orientation of it, right? What's the right orientation? Is this the title here? Is this line one? Or is this line one, right? Um, you know, what's interesting here is, like we saw before, if you submit a form upside down, um, like I have an example here, right? If we submit this form upside down, form recognizer will know that, it's, that it is upside down. So let's take our file, upside down file here, right? And send it over, okay? So we grab our uh, request ID put it in, okay? So if we look at this picture here, uh, the, the title is general fundraiser information, um, and then the secondary text is cookie dough plus, right? Um, and this is obviously upside down, and form recognizer knows that it's upside down. So it has the rotation here, you can see the angle, it's minus 179 degrees, and it pulled out general fundraiser information, which is our real first line, right? So there's an interesting question here, which is, you know, what's going to happen when it encounters text like this, where it has text on the top and, you know, this very large text on the side, right? Is it going to know um, what the right layout of this, right orientation of this document is, right? Um, so let's, let's give it a try. All right, so we sent that over. Uh, we grab our key here, and we analyze the result. All right, and that's interesting, right? You can see here our first line is see it, report it, right? Uh, let's go down until we see our, uh, our text here, what the new spotted lanternfly quarantine means for you, okay? So we're not quite there yet, Rutgers. Okay, university, and this is really impressive here, this university, because if you look at here, that's this tiny text down here, Rutgers University. Um, it's not particularly well rendered. Um, it's a little blurry, but it picked it out nonetheless, right? Okay, let's keep going. Uh, USDA, not quite there yet. State Forestry Service. J, Forest Service, UAS, 
Still not there yet. Still not quite there yet. Okay, so all the ways down here, maybe 10, 10 or 12 lines down, we found the what the new spotted lanternfly um, quarantine is probably going to be the next line quarantine means for you. So it's interesting. It's able to detect, you know, even though there's some text here, it knows that the majority of the text is oriented this way, um, and it processes this text separately, and somehow is able to slice the page and kind of rotate just parts of the page uh, while it's doing its text extraction, right? So that's pretty impressive. You know, you can send it very complicated layouts, um, and it can still kind of determine what the right orientation is. Uh, what I think is also interesting is you can see here, you know, it some of the results we saw, it actually picked out this text even though it's on this curved path here, right? Um, and even over here, this forest service, it picked out this text here even though it's on this curved path. It did, it did make some mistakes down here with this text here. It couldn't pick out the correct orientation here um, along this curved path here. Um, and of course, it made a bunch of mistakes here on the circular text, okay? All right, so as I said before, the uh, example that they have here, you know, is only in Python. Um, so what we want to do is take a look at how we can interact with it um, from .NET, okay? Okay, so I have a project set up here already, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, add two libraries to our project for working with this API. Um, of course, you can use raw, you know, HTTP client to do this as well. But you're going to have a much better time if you install um, REST Sharp. Okay. And the other library that we're going to want to install uh, is Newtonsoft JSON. And we're going to take a look at how these two packages um, are used to help us process uh, process these requests and responses, okay? So with REST Sharp, what you get is you get this, um, you know, you get a kind of wrapper around the HTTP client that makes making the REST request a little bit easier. Um, one of the things we'll have to do is if we looked at the documentation here, with each of our requests, we need to send over a OCP APIN uh, subscription key, right? So this is really our authentication key. And what we can do with REST Sharp is we can write a custom authenticator. Um, and what this will do is this will append our key value to every outgoing request. So it gives us a request um, that's outgoing and we can intercept it and add additional headers. In this case, we are going to append our uh, API key that I have in this file uh, that we're going to pick up, okay? Now what we can do is we can write our REST client. We can instantiate our REST client. Um, and we provide it a URL. Okay, so I'm just going to grab this from Postman because I already have this here. All right, so here's our request. Um, then what we can do is we can go ahead and set the authenticator to our custom authenticator. Okay. Now we want a request. Request request method dot post. And we're going to need to do two things. Request uh, dot add header. What we want to do is specify this other parameter here, which is the content type. Okay, and it can accept these five types here. We're going to send over a JPEG. Uh, whoops, content type. Okay. And then the next part is we want to add the content. Um, in this case, we're going to add as a parameter. If you do add body, this won't work correctly because what will happen is it's going to generate a multi part form data uh, request, and that won't work. Remember, we need to submit a binary request uh, to the API. Okay. So, what we want to do is we want to call add parameter. And we're going to put image JPEG here, put contents here, and then we have to set this as the parameter type request body. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we actually need to read these contents here. Read 
all bytes. And we have the image here as part of our project already. I'm going to grab this name here. OK. And now we are going to uh, rest response. I think, uh, yeah, that's our response here. Response equals uh, forms dot execute uh, request. OK, so this is going to send off our request. And we're going to get back a, uh, get back a response. And the piece of the response that we're interested in is we can either get this operation location um, or this APIN request ID and append the value to our outgoing, um, you know, our next request. So I think this is enough here. We'll just grab, uh, we'll just grab this uh, operation location. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say uh, response dot headers dot first or default and we're gonna do param we're gonna do param name equals equals and I think it's operation location okay uh, I think it's dot value okay and we'll do it like this and string uh, just analyze result. Okay. So this should give us, we should convert this to string. Okay. So let's just try it out and see what we get here. We should get our result URL uh, somewhere over here. Um, and let's see how it goes. Two out of five. All right, perfect. So we got our URL here. Um, and what we would want to do then is feed this URL into our next request, right? Um, so let's rename this request to uh, analyze request, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, result from the result URL, okay? So we're going to create another request. We're going to say rest request. Result request equals new rest request and method uh, dot um, get. And we will say request. So actually, we can add the URL here, right? So URI, URI equals uh, URI equals new. URI and result URL. So now we can just put that here. Okay. So we have that set up. And let's see, because we also have this uh, full URL here, the question is whether it will, um, it's going to do this correctly, right? So let's take a look and see if we'll make this request correctly. If not, we can just create another forms client or refactor this a little bit. Um, so let's see here if we do forms.execute uh, request, result request. So let's see if we get the correct uh, response here. All right, so it looked like it didn't fail, so it probably sent it out correctly. Um, let's see if we can process this response. And this is where the Newton's off JSON comes in. Um, is that we're going to use the J object. And just so to make it easier to query that response, um, result 
equals j object dot parse. And what we're going to parse is result response uh, dot content. Okay. So let's see here. The first thing we want to do is console dot out dot right line. Um, we're going to try doing result um, and get the status, right? Um, so if you look at our output from here, when we make this call, the first thing we should have is we should be able to access the status and make sure it's su it succeeded, right? So we're just going to write out the response status and see if we get an error here and make sure our request is working correctly. I think we were on this screen this time. Okay, so actually right now it's still running, right? Um, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change this code a little bit. Uh, we can add a timeout. Um, let's just do that because I know usually it takes around two seconds. So I think if we add a timeout uh, thread, we'll just set this to about two seconds, two, 2,500 milliseconds, 2.5 seconds. Um, should be definitely, be definitely done by then, so let's run. All right, so 2.5 seconds, it succeeded. And what we can do here is rather than writing out the status, right, um, what we want to get is, let's say in this case, we want to get the first line. What we can do is we want to get analyze result, uh, read results. So this is an object, this is an array, read results. Okay. Read results, and in our first object, we want lines. And we want the text of the first line, right? So this is an array of objects here. So we want the first one, and we want to get the text, okay? So what this should give us is this should give us um, see it reported, right? Um, or whatever image we're sending over here. Uh, 2018, yeah. So this is going to give us uh, are you lonely, right? All right, let's run this. Object not set to an instance of an object. Um, so there's some part of our path is not correct here, okay? Um, so let's do this. So let's make sure that this time we actually complete it in time. Um, right, analyze result. Let's check our path, analyze result. Read results, okay, so this also needs, this is also an array, right? So read results, we also need a zero here, right? Um, control F5. unhandled exception. So we, it's still running in this case, it didn't finish. Um, so we can make this ro more robust by putting this into a, um, into a loop potentially. Um, so we're just gonna increase this to three seconds for now. Still running, all right. So maybe we need even more time. Uh, let's give it a full five seconds. All right, so there you go. So in five seconds, it succeeded, and we got back our result, are you lonely? And that's precisely what we're expecting here, right? Um, so obviously, this is not meant to be production-ready code, right? We're just slapping this together to give you an idea of how you can uh, interact with it with, um, with REST Sharp. Um, and what you probably want to do is you want to probably build some sort of uh, deserializer um, to get this response into a object format, right? If you're using this um, in a production, production environment, add much more error handling around that. Uh, so you can see here, it can take up to five seconds for the analysis to fully complete. So you wanna make sure you have some accommodation for that, um, checking periodically for the result 
uh, rather than just once like I'm doing here. But it's still, you know, I, I think this is a very powerful service and I'm really looking forward to this getting into production, um, into general availability. I think um, the price is a little bit high uh, because it, I think it's, it's something like $25 for every thousand pages you analyze, um, which to me seems quite high for this kind of a service. Um, but it's extremely powerful because now you can analyze almost anything, right? Um, you're not limited to forms or documents, anything you can take a picture of that has text on it. You can potentially send it up to extract that text and then do something else with that, right? Make some decision and advance whatever process uh, you're modeling and building. So I think this is a really, really powerful service, uh, very interesting. You know, what used to involve um, what used to involve a lot of uh, very specialized machine learning know-how and you know specialized um, techniques with OCR and specialized software, um, now you can get as a commodity service that you just sign up for, and you can you know twenty-five dollars for every thousand documents. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit on the pricey side for a cloud service. Uh, but at the same time, compared to what you would have had, what you would have had to do uh, by hand, you know, it's it's probably a bargain in the long run, right? So definitely a very powerful service. Uh, do encourage you to go and sign up for the preview and play around with it. Um, I think it's uh, has a lot of potential uh, for the right types of applications. All right. And if you're interested in any additional follow-up videos, anything else you're interested in seeing with the service, just leave a comment below. Uh, I do follow up with the comments and we'll check out other aspects of this service if there's any, any interest.